Well, good morning, YouTube. Well, the storm's passed. Um, it's a relatively nice morning, but uh, we just had a delivery from Amazon. Now, one of the things that I've noticed about my heat pump is that we have a single point of temperature sensing inside the house. That means that the temperature that the system is working from is just the temperature in the hall. But I want to see, is the heat evenly distributed around the house? Now, rather than me run around every few minutes and just take temperature readings, we've got a technology solution. So let's head into the office, let's get this unboxed, and I'll show you what I'm planning. So here's what I'm trying to achieve. I want to be able to put a small, low-cost temperature sensor in all of the rooms of the house so that they're constantly monitoring the temperature. And then over a period of time, I can take a look at the graph and I can see how the heat is dissipating through the house. Now, lots of people who have heat pumps subscribe to different ideas of how you should operate them. Um, some like to heat the house very early in the morning on cheap rate power and allow the thermal mass of the house to keep it warm throughout the day. Uh, others like me prefer to have the heat pump on all of the time and just allow it to maintain a constant temperature. But is it constant? Is it staying within the range in every single room that we require? And if it's not, we have to do something about that. But the first step is gathering the data. So. Let's take a look at what we got from Amazon today. Okay, let's make a little bit of space on the desk here. And I need my opener. Now, unlike some other people on YouTube, I'm not gonna use a massive zombie knife, even though they are illegal, to open my packages. Um, I've got a letter opener. I'm just gonna whiz over to the drawer and grab that. Okay, back to our package. Okay, let's take a look in this large Amazon box because knowing what is in here, it doesn't need a box quite this big. So, as you can see, overpackaging Amazon style. Okay. So the first thing to say is, this is not a sponsored video. Cara did not sponsor these. I paid for these with my own money. And uh, like with all the things in my house, they are what I consider to be the most ideal for the job. They're not the most expensive, they're not the cheapest, but they actually do the job. And I already have, uh, I think three of these already. I have one in each of my bathrooms that uh, not only do they monitor the temperature, they also monitor the humidity. And in the bathrooms, when the humidity gets too high, the fans come on automatically through an automation in Home Assistant. What we have here are two packs of three of the sensors. So let's uh, see if we can get into them. <laughs> Again, the overpackaging is just ridiculous. So there's the three sensors that came in that box which were overpacked in that box let's open this one up i don't know why they insist on using these uh, sticky tabs to hold the boxes closed the cardboard is all nicely recycled and then they go and cover it in plastic okay so we have six akara temperature and humidity sensors. So let's take a look at the sensor itself. As you can see, it's a, it's quite a small little thing. Um, it has a tab here, obviously once we pull that, it will activate the battery. It has its intake on the bottom there for its, both its temperature and humidity sensors. And it has a little reset button there on the top. So if you have any problems with it, you can factory reset the device itself. So these sensors do require the Acara app. So I'm going to start that app up. Um, what I'll do is I'll give you a, a closer view of that rather than try and hold my phone under the screen so you can actually see what it is that I'm doing. So the first thing we're going to do is in the list of devices, we're going to hit sensor and we're going to pull down the list of hubs that we have. Now you'll see I have two what are called camera hubs, the G3s and the Hub M2. 
Now I'm going to try and bind them to the M2. Now I'm quite a distance from my M2, but we'll give that a go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this little tab to start the battery. And that will put the device into pairing mode. So the screen now says long press the reset button for more than five seconds until the blue light links. And we'll just wait for the light to come on. There we go. The blue light is now linking. We'll pop that down there. And we'll see if my hub in the house can actually find this device. I suspect we are a little bit too far away from it. Let's try that one more time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head in closer to the hub and I'm going to pair it and I'll be back in a few moments. Some time later. Okay, to save everybody a lot of time and a lot of boredom, um, I've unpackaged all the sensors, I've set them all up, I've loaded them all onto the M2 hub and because they're all on the M2 hub, they automatically propagate into Home Assistant. Now the reason for this is the M2 hub is set up with matter integration. So all devices that uh, are connected to the M2 hub show up as matter devices under the M2 hub. So if I head over to my Acara hub M2, um, you'll see here we have all of the different sensors uh, that are coming off of that hub. And I've renamed them all to all of the different uh, temperature sensors. So now that we've got them all into Home Assistant, it's a really simple case to set up a graph which I've done here on a, on a testing dashboard. So you can see here, these are all the different temperature sensors around my house. I mean, ignore the big spikes, that was the way I was identifying each sensor because the serial numbers are printed in such small text on the back I couldn't read them. Um, so I just held them in my hand for a few seconds which pushed the temperature up and I could see which one spiked on the graph and that allowed me to identify it and give it its correct name. Now underneath that you can see we have real-time temperatures from all the different rooms in the house. These are all obviously point in time. You'll notice that they're all starting to, to come down to the same level. Now normally in our house what we do during the day, if it's a nice day outside, we'll open up the windows, we'll let some fresh air into the house which will obviously bring the temperature down and then in the afternoon we close the windows up and let the house heat back up. So things like our ensuite there, you'll see we've had the window open but that will heat back up over the next couple of hours. Now what I'm going to do is let this sit for a day or two. So you are not going to have to wait a day or two, it's going to happen instantaneously, but I'm going to come back in a couple of days, we'll take a look at the graph and we'll see how all the rooms are re reporting and we'll compare that to the sensor that the heat pump installers put down in my downstairs hallway. So with that, I'll see you in a couple of days. Okay, so the magic of editing, it's now 48 hours later and let's take a look at the graphs and see what we can see. So. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take off the office temperature. Um, this is my office that I'm in now because this is not heated on what we call the wet system. Um, this is heated independently. And I'm also going to take off the kitchen, which is the purple, oh, sorry, the purple, the pink line you can see at the top there. And that's really because we see skews in temperature in the kitchen when we're cooking, when we have the tumble dryer running, things like that. So I don't want them to skew the results. And you'll notice that the lines kind of all follow each other. They all run in a, a similar kind of pattern here, which means that they're all pretty close together with one exception. And that's my ensuite bathroom. We need to go and have a look and see what's happening in the ensuite bathroom and why that's different. So, quick look with the thermal camera shows that we've got some cold spots on the radiator. This is probably due to the fact that when Octopus bled the radiators for the rest of the house, they didn't touch the ones that were in the ensuite or in the main bathroom. So I'm going to head into the main bathroom. We'll take a look at that radiator, and I suspect there's something similar there. Yep, we've got some cold spots. In fact, the, the ultra warm spots you can see there are just where the towels were on the radiator before. I've just taken those off, so you're going to see the remnants of heat left behind where the towels have been sitting. But we've got some cold spots in this radiator, so it looks like I'm going to have to bleed both of these. Simple fix, and we should have these rooms up to the same temperatures as everywhere else. Now, looking at the rest of the graph, I think we have nice, even heating all the way across the house. We're, according to this, running at somewhere between sort of 18 to 20 degrees. The thermostat in the house says 20 degrees right now. 
Um, my thermometers are probably maybe a degree under that, but that could just be down to the inaccuracies of the calibration. Um, I'm not going to quibble over one degree, but what it shows me is we have nice even heating across the house. Um, you can see there as the temperature falls during the night when we tell the heat pump to give us a lower temperature during the night, we drop down to around about 18, 17 to 18 degrees. And then in the morning, it starts to rise back up again but we're getting that nice even wave of temperatures throughout the house where warm during the day, cooler at night, then warming back up the next day. Now, one last thing is a few people in the comments have said that the Daikin thermometer, the way it's been constructed with its LED display and, and the blue light ring is that LED can influence the reading of the thermometer itself. People have said that it can influence it by as much as a degree. Now, if you take a degree off what the thermometer is saying, it almost correlates exactly with what my room sensors are saying. Now, that's not proof. I will do some further investigations to find out if that's true. And looking in the Daikin settings, there is a, a calibration setting. I'm going to look into that a little bit more and just see if I can bring those lines a little bit closer together. For all the naysayers out there who said you're going to end up with a cold house, I hope these graphs um, go some way to disproving that. We've got a nice consistent temperature in the house. The temperature is fluctuating between about 20 degrees during the day down to about 17 degrees at night time. I hope this has been useful. If it has, please hit that like and subscribe button. I'd love to hear from you in the comments on how you're getting on with your heat pump journey. Or for those of you that uh, just want more information, please hit me up with questions. More than happy to answer them. With that, I'm going to sign off. If I'm lucky, I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.